In this series of videos, I'm attempting to make a lost artifact, a walking stick made from playing cards, purportedly made by my great-grandfather. In the first video, I introduced the characters which make up part of this family mythology. And in the previous one, I unboxed and set up a manual die cutting press, designed a cutting and creasing former that I had fabricated, and made a jig for holding playing cards to be used with the former and press all essentially making these look like that, so I could do this with them again and again and again, again and again and again, again and again. Literally like a kebab. In this, the third video, I will go about preparing the playing cards to make a sample, which I can then sand to reveal the unusual colours and patterns created by this process. When I made my first attempt to construct the walking stick in 2010, I built a jig to compress the cards. This consisted of two blocks of wood faced with 6mm aluminium. Those had a slot from the top where the metal rod holding the cards could be dropped down into. The clamp's two ends were connected with four thick threaded rods, and wing nuts that I could rotate to bring the clamping faces together, applying pressure. That tool was fairly successful, but I had problems with the handle that I clamped in a completely different way, which over a decade of storage and a couple exhibitions has begun to crack. I don't fully understand how the original was compressed. Geragos only had a small blacksmithing workshop with the bare essentials of smithing tools, an oxyacetylene torch, hammers, an anvil, and an old style vice. There's no photos of the inside of his workshop, and maybe only one or two from the outside. My late grandmother thought he made his by compressing small sections of card at a time using the vise. These sections must have only been as wide as the vise's jaws could reach, and possibly after making several sections, those were joined together. But with what glue? We have no idea. She thought he just used water and later lacquered the finished object, but a similar attempt back in 2010 didn't work for me. For this sample I'll be using a core made from 6mm bright steel, and after soaking the playing cards until they were visibly sodden, I diluted some wood glue with clean water, dipping the cards in the thick batter as if I was about to make some tempura. I then skewered one card at a time onto the metal rod, which I have to admit was a very messy process. I could now place the sample between an impromptu press made from a few bits of MDF with a hole drilled out of each piece for the central metal rod and some clamps to apply pressure, which I left to dry for about a month. The design of the clamping device is something I'll need to think about more carefully and I suspect will be the subject of a later video. This is the sample, which you can see is now fully cured. When I made the previous version, I used a block plane, rasp and files to shape the material, which as you can imagine took some time to complete. This time I have access to the ultimate retirement tool, a wood lathe. One end of the sample is secured tightly into the self-centering chuck, with the other end pushed onto a dowel, which has a six millimeter hole drilled through the center on the lathe itself. That opening goes through the entire dowel block and is pushed onto the revolving live center on the tailstock, which is tightened ever so slightly with the hand rule. I then adjusted the tool rest up to a position so the cutting edge of the tool was in line with the center of the sample and went between a gouge and scraper chisel to remove most of the material and finished with some sandpaper which cleaned up the surface nicely. I used floor varnish for the previous version, which after a decade has yellowed, but this time I will use some clear satin Osmo oil. I 
I shook the tin well and applied a generous layer on the sample which you can see soaking in. There are some gaps between the layers where I hadn't applied enough clamping pressure, but after a few applications of Osmo and light sand in between those applications, there seems to be a nice finish. I probably could use the sanding process to produce some dust which I could size into the gaps as well. I'm going to leave this video here. I'm really happy with the test piece, but when I return, whenever that will be, and it may be a while, I'll have hopefully come up with a design for a new and robust clamping jig. The lathe does make creating the cylindrical shape easier, but I don't think I can turn a walking stick with a hooked handle. I'll have to decide whether to make a longer piece and bend the handle, or make the sections in parts, which I could somehow join together later. Anyway, thanks again for watching, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the pesky algorithm gods, they are really punishing me at the moment.